Hello, my name is Simon McGlenny and uh, I'm often asked what I do as regards my animals uh, when I'm repopulating the cage after cleaning uh, because I don't keep my hamsters in, for example, in what are considered starter cages. I, just, I happen to think that starter cages are just way, way too small. And I also take some ideas from Edinburgh Zoo. I'm a volunteer at Edinburgh Zoo and I take some of the ideas from there and from what I've read up, up about hamsters and incorporate them into the cage. And I thought I'd make this little video to let you see what I do as I repopulate the cage. And pretty much from here on in you'll see what I do as regards to the cage. The camera will look down towards the cage as I repopulate. The cage in question is Fossey's cage. Fossey is my female Syrian hamster. And uh, you'll see what I put in to try and keep her interested, keep her occupied. And if you can hear anything in the background, that's her in her holding uh, cage, as it were, of one of those small pet carriers uh, where I put, put her in with some old bedding and some food just to keep her comfortable while looking clean cleaning the cage. So here we go and we'll start repopulating the cage for Fossey to go back in. Uh, and I hope you enjoy and find interesting what I do here. And here we go. Okay I've got everything ready for uh, repopulating the cage, putting the stuff back in the cage and also reintroducing the hamster. Uh, what I'm going to bring in first, you might find strange, especially when you see the rest of the cage. Tubes. I originally had the tubes for another hamster, a previous hamster, as a play device. And uh, after he'd gone, the ownership of hamsters changed, which hamsters are kept, uh, changed, and I now use this tube on the base of the cage as a tunnel to play in. I'm also going to do something else with this tunnel. I'm going to put a monkey nut back the way through the tunnel. Now this will disappear in due course, but what this does is it allows the animal some natural foraging. I'm also going to put some down dotted around, which will end up being underneath the cage substrate. And for the cage substrate, uh, I use wood shavings, dust extracted wood shavings. I wouldn't recommend it for a long-haired hamster. If you have a long-haired hamster, your best bet is to use a uh, paper-based cage substrate, something such as Carefresh. Now, I'm also going to add in some tunnels and two toys. These are all available at any leading pet shop. You can see on this one, where Fossey has actually been chewing it. This whole thing is edible and it's also a great plaything. You can put little bits of bits of food in there and little treats and all sorts of things. And it's nice and hard so it wears down their teeth. Ro remember that rodent teeth are always continually growing. There's a bit of old wood shaving there. So now I've got this much in, I'm now going to put the wood shavings in. As I say, dust extracted wood shavings. Make sure it says on the outside of the packet that it is suitable for hamsters. And remember, it's usually very tightly compacted and it will need broken up. So you don't need as much as you think because once you break it up it actually spreads out quite a bit. I'm 
many of these will tell you what is suitable for individual animals and we'll have a chat on the back any good reputable brands anyway we'll have a chat here on the back explaining which bedding to use for your pet make sure you get the right one for your pet always get the right one for your pet it's for your pet's health it's for the good of your pet The reason why I put peanuts underneath is uh, hamsters in the wild are foraging animals. They go looking for food. They'll dig for food. They do dig. It's a natural thing for them to do. Normally they would look, their dens would be underground. Their nests would be underground. Uh, and a lot of people wonder why Place of dwarf hamsters you can keep uh, is provided you don't want to breed them. If you would don't want to breed them, you would keep them as same sex groups. But with Syrian hamsters, you don't. The way to look at it is, and this applies to any animal, is look at where they would come from and how available the food supply would be. The less available the food supply would be, the more likely that animal would be solitary. The more available the food supply, the more likely that animal will live in groups. Obviously, Syrian hamsters come from the, the Syrian desert. Food supply is very scarce, as their main source of food, food is uh, se seeds. So their food supply would be fairly scarce and therefore they would be solitary. Now you notice I'm rubbing the blocks between my hand I've found it's probably one of the best ways to to break up so that it fluffs up. Nice, so that's the the substrate now. Something else I do as well is, and this is something I picked up from from the zoo. Any background rattling you hear actually is from the neighbouring neighbouring hamster. That's Gibson. Uh, he's got food stored in his tunnels. I'll show you. You'll see that as I go along. Now, what I'm now going to do something that I picked up at the zoo. And this is something I also do at, uh, at random intervals in between cage cleans. Always good for the animal. Always quite exciting for the animal as well. Make sure, obviously, remember before you start your hands are clean. You can, if you wish, wear latex gloves. It's up to you. But so long as your hands are clean, use an antibacterial cleaner. cleaner. But what I do here is a scatter feed. And basically, scatter feed is just that. Scatter some food around. What I use is uh, the Supreme's Harry Hamster hamster food. I have tried feeding my hamsters Harry Hamster in a bowl and they won't look at it. However, if I scatter it, they'll eat it. Some other toys. Don't be afraid, this is normally a rabbit toy, but don't be afraid to use rabbit toys. Uh, anything, basically, that they can chew on, rip apart. Good for them. Keeps them occupied, keeps their teeth working, wearing down, and anything that keeps their mind active, their bodies active, anything that really adds to the environment of your animal. These toys as well, they have uh, edible paints, so they're perfectly safe for them. Balls, that kind of thing. Anything that makes the animal work, and have to think about what it's doing. So, we now have that stage done. We're now ready to bring in, whoops, the top part of the cage. Now, 
I already have the top part of the cage prepared because I'm like that. The top part of the cage comes in and clips on. Always make sure you clip the top part of the cage on. Uh, you may have a small animal, you may think it's a small hamster, but uh, they're stronger than they look. Never be deceived by a small animal. They can be very deceptive indeed. Bring in the two ramps. Now, the cage I have here is the Savic Ham... Ha oh, start again. The Savic Hamster Heaven Metro. Uh, fantastic cage. Lovely big cage. And, like I say, much bigger than the starter cages. The starter cages, you could probably fit three starter cages in here. Uh, if you get thinking about getting a hamster, do your research, do a lot of research first and invest in the biggest cage you can find. Go online if you have to, to try and find it, but get a good big hamster cage. Well worth doing. The hamster will love you for it, trust me. Now, bring back the top tunnels. Now in a way, this is going to be a bit of a masterclass in uh, construct, reconstructing these tunnels. So, there's one of these green connectors, one of these green connectors on the underside of this, so that's going to go there. My next task is to assemble the long tube with a connector on the end of it and add it in here. And again, the corner piece connector and add it in like so. And we'll bring this tube into here. At this point, I shall also bring in the main food bowl it's always worth remembering that the best food to start your hamster on is the food that it was eating in the shop phase in any change of food or if getting the same food is relatively straightforward stick with it it's not worth the hassle. Keep your hamster happy and your hamster will pay back. Now, don't be surprised if, with the food, you find things change. Uh, some hamsters prefer the little brown bits. Fossey, for example, loves the brown bits. Some hamsters prefer the likes of the, the flake peas, the flake peas and the flake corn. Don't worry, every individual is different. The thing to worry about is if they're a bit funny about their food and uh, don't eat any at all. Observe your animal and you'll find that they like all sorts of different things. If you have more than one hunt, Anyone with more than one hamster, I'm sure, will be able to tell you that every animal is different. Drop up the food somewhere, the water somewhere. Tip of the water, always fill it to the brim. It doesn't drip quite as much. Something else I'll also do, in some stores and pets at home, you can get complete hamster foods now, just as you can get complete rats. Rat get rat nuggets, you can now get hamster foods. Fossey loves her, ha her uh, hamster nuggets, so I'll feed Fossey hamster nuggets as well. But what I'll do is 
this part of the cage here don't know if you can see it I'll move the camera this part of the cage up here I can put some food in there now remember hamsters store the food that is where the name comes from it comes from the German for to hoard and that's why they're called hamsters because they hoard food hamsters are very very frugal animals they will not eat more than they have to they like to make the food last put some other things dotted around the cage as well some larger pieces of food these are cheesy biscuits for example and apple strudels what I'll do is I'll put this on the hanging toy here this makes things a little bit more interesting you can also get hamster donuts now if you have one of these hanging toys for example if you, uh, that is designed primarily as rabbit feeders what you can do is you can put them through the hole of the hamster donut and it gives them something again makes it difficult for them to get strangely enough the more difficult it is for the animal to get the more they seem to enjoy it keeps them occupied isn't it fussy now to the bed area which tops off the Hamster Heaven Metro. The great thing about the Hamster Heaven Metro is because they use such a separate bed area, not all hamsters, apparently not all hamsters will use this bed area. My two do, which is very fortunate, and you'll see why. Because they do, they do use this, it keeps the rest of the cage relatively clean. Therefore, you only have to clean this part weekly instead of the whole cage and you can get away with the rest of the cage possibly every two to three weeks depends on the cage and it depends on the individual animal a number of things you should always remember is this is very important hamsters are clean animals All animals are clean animals. Give them some litter. What this does is it absorbs the urine. It also absorbs any smells as well. People will tell you that rats smell. Rats don't smell as much as hamsters. Strangely enough, hamsters do smell a little. But give them a give them a toilet corner. Give them some litter. They'll use, they will use it, and it will keep the smell down. Also, when you redo the bed area, put some food in. I usually put about a handful in, because otherwise they get really upset if they, if they get to the nest area and find there's no be there has been no food at all. They get really uptight, uh, it, and it worries them. Don't let them get worried. I also like to add a couple of little hanging sticks. Posse likes a sweet corn. Some people would say don't. Some people would say take it out every now and again. Every animal is different. Posse, for example. This is a dandelion stick I'm about to put in. Fossey, for example, can strip one of these in one go. Actually, that's a little bit too easy for it. Further back, and then it hangs a bit more. Fossey, for example, can strip hers in one go. So, keep them in different places, and uh, that keeps them busy and occupied. Next, bedding. Now I'm sure you've seen in shops 
shredded paper and uh, fluffy, fluffy hamster bedding. Do not use anything fluffy with hamsters. Do not use any fabric based bedding with hamsters. Here's the best, best bedding to use for hamsters. Toilet paper, paper. Doesn't have to be your best Andrex. In fact, far from it. That's as the value toilet paper. That will get shredded. The hamster loves it. It gives the hamster something to do. And on top of that, it's cheap. For the price of a pack of pre-shredded paper to use as for hamster bedding, you will get somewhere between eight and 12 value toilet rolls. That will do you, one toilet roll will do you four cleanings. See where I'm coming from? So you don't have to spend a fortune. You don't have to, you can if you want, but you don't have to. You can make budget cuts in, in other areas. This also provides you with another chew toy for the hamster if you so wish. If the hamster is a destructive one. I'll close up the top. Because that's me ready to introduce the hamster. And if she'll come out and behave herself. Come on, Fossey. Come on. Here we go. My hamster, Fossey. Hey! Named after the primatologist Dan Fossey. In she goes. There's her corn and she's loving it. She's off hunting already. And that is how you clean one hamster heaven metro for your hamster and keep your hamster interested. If you don't have a hamster heaven metro, keep the scatter feed in mind because the scatter feed is brilliant fun for your animal. And that's it. That's been me, Simon McGlady. And that's how I fill up my hamster cages. Thank you for watching.